Well, hello again. It's Jeff Hopper with Jeff Cranford mm -hmm. talking about threads of righteousness. And right now we're talking about love, that thread that runs through the entirety of Scripture. And when we talked last time, you set us up with the scene from the garden where Adam and Eve fell into sin. Mm -hmm. And it was this question of now, why would God even let them do that? Why would he set them up right. for sin? And you hinted toward the fact that it was a sacrifice a sacrificial love that was going to be demonstrated by him caused that setup. And, and I would then point to Jesus' own words. There is no greater love. No greater love. Okay, right. so in the universe, we know Jesus that's spoke cosmically. Point. Yeah, that's good. In the universe, there is no greater love than what? Than that a man lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he was then setting them up for his own coming death. Mm, now, why was that death necessary? Because of what had happened in the garden. Yeah. Correct. So there is this. Would, there is this <laughs> link across time, from the fact that God allowed them to fall into sin, because He had to have a way to demonstrate the love that has no greater love than it than what it is. Right. And if you think too, Jeff, about what is God ultimately after? I mean, why the, some people think of it, the experiment of earth. If we're gonna move into eternity and there's gonna be no more tears and there's gonna be no more frustration and pain, why, why not skip the step of the death and the fall and the, sure. all this other thing? Is because God's looking for a creation that has free will for sure, that has some of those imago Dei in the, created in the image of God attributes that man has been uh, endowed with and to, to, so we can relate on a deep level with him. He could create us as little robots and then we could never have that depth of relationship. But this process of the deaths and the fall and the rebellion and all the pain that goes on must be a, uh, a link to the future that's going to provide the scenario in heaven where we now not only can love God but can love one another. And so in our sacrificial love, we truly learn to love one another in the way that God loves us. So not only are we all connected to God properly, heaven is going to be where we're also connected to one another properly. Imagine a place where someone else is looking out for your best interest and you're looking out for their best interest. That simple scenario and you alleviate, you alleviate the pain in the world right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm looking out for the poor, I'm looking out and they're looking out for me, all of a sudden over time I have no more poor. Uh, right. You know, if, there, if there's war and I'm looking out for the best interest of my enemy, as Jesus said, bless those who persecute you, pray for those, you know, enemies of yours. If I'm more concerned about them, very quickly, it's called absorption, they're no longer my enemy. And now you truly do have an eternal scenario where we can live forever with God with the all-encompassing love that will exist. Love will continue. Faith, hope, and love, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. Faith, hope, and love, but right now, love's the most powerful. That's the most important. That's the attribute of God that is paramount. I won't need faith and hope anymore. I don't need faith when I can see something with my own two eyes and I'm living it every day. I don't need hope to think about a future expectation when I'm already in the eternal state. But love will continue. And that well, that's what will define heaven and that's what should begin to define our relationships now here on earth. Mm. Now we've been talking about threads of righteousness in terms of how we might act righteously according to what scripture calls us to. And so I want to talk to you one more time about love basically about the practice mm. of love as we would live it as followers of Jesus today. Great.